hello and welcome to the channel on this channel we talk about studying working and living in the uk as a foreign national if you're interested in topics like this join the community by subscribing to this youtube channel likewise follow my pathway uk on facebook and on instagram for more information about life in the uk in today's video we would be talking about why the student visa and the graduate visa are not meant for immigration purposes we would also be talking about why the graduate visa does not count towards your permanent residency likewise we would be dissecting an email i got from the uk government concerning the student visa and the graduate visa lastly we would talk about how to use the student visa and the graduate visa to legally settle in the uk permanently the good thing about the uk's immigration system is that if you are a foreign national and you wish to come to the uk to work and live in the uk permanently and probably become a british citizen there are a lot of visas to use for this apart from the student visa and the graduate visa you can use the global talent visa the skilled worker visa or the health and care worker visa the uk did not intend the graduate visa and the student visa be used by international students for immigration purposes the student visa was put together by the uk government to give international students the right to study in the uk only and probably work a part-time job on the other hand the uk government put together the graduate visa to help international students who have studied in the UK find a job so they can gain work experience. It was also put together by the UK government to help international students transition to another kind of visa if they wish to settle in the UK permanently. That is why the graduate visa does not count and will not count towards permanent residency. The simplest way to define the graduate visa is to see the graduate visa like a landing visa. A visa that allows you to stay in the UK temporarily until you find another kind of visa or you get a job or decide on what you want to do after your course of study. Moving on to the email the UK government sent me. I know a lot of people are very interested in this email I got from the UK government. A few weeks ago, there was this petition that was circulating within the international student community. The petition will expire 22nd of October 2020. Now, this petition is to make graduate visa extendable and count towards permanent residency. However, the UK government has taken their time to respond to this petition. Now, this petition is the reason why I got an email from the UK government. Now, everybody who signs this petition got this email because the email is a response from the UK government about the petition we had signed. However, if this petition should get 100,000 signatures, the petition would be considered for debate in Parliament. Right now, the petition has gotten 15,490 signatures but the uk government has responded to this petition now the response the uk government sent to my email is the same response that is under the petition and is available on the public domain if you want to know more or you want to follow up on this particular petition now let's read the response of the uk government in summary the uk government does not support this proposal the UK government is saying that the graduate route allows legible graduates to remain in the UK up to three years with the possibility to switch to a route to permanent residence. So that's the short of the email. The UK government told everyone who signed this petition that they do not support this proposal. Now let's read this email in full. Mind you, the email I got from the UK government, the information is on the public domain because this petition is still on and you can go on the internet and search for this petition and read whatever the UK government sent in my mail. However, I'm reading it right now and that's what I'm showing you on the screen. The response to the petition. This is what the UK government has to say. The UK government is saying, 
The government recognizes the significant contribution of international students who come to the UK to study. Obviously, international students in the UK make significant contribution to the UK because we pay a high tuition fee. And the high tuition fee international students pay helps UK universities and helps the UK economy. Apart from the tuition fee we pay, when international students come to the UK, they come with their dependents. Them and their dependents will rent apartments, they will buy things in the UK. So they spend money in the UK and it helps the UK economy. And our tuition fee helps the university. And the visa money we pay obviously helps the home office in one way or the other. Now, moving on. The main purpose for students coming to the UK is to study. Bagam. Now, they said it, the main purpose for students coming to the UK is to study and not to settle in the UK. The graduate route introduced in July 2021 is designed to provide greater opportunities for talented international students to be able to remain in the UK for two years, three years for PhD graduates. So two years for post-study and undergraduate student and three years for PhD students and find work once they have successfully completed their studies. Now, for those of you who don't know, for you to apply for the graduate visa, you must have successfully completed your studies. Now, I have a video on my channel where I talk about all you need to know about the graduate visa and why international students in the UK and their dependents are being denied these visas. If you're interested in that, I'll link it to this video and I'll link it in the description box so you can go watch it furthermore the response went on to say graduates who find an appropriate job and meet the relevant requirements will be able to apply to work routes including the skilled worker route which leads to permanent settlement if you want to work and live in the uk permanently the visa you should be targeting is the skilled worker visa the uk government have said it plainly in this response moving on with what the uk government has to say so it's saying the graduate route presents a significant improvement on the previous offer for international students who complete a degree in the uk the requirements for the route are simple for graduates to meet there are safeguards to prevent the abuse of this route but it is also unsponsored and fundamentally exists to only provide a temporary grant of leave allowing legible international students to maximize their potential by having the opportunity of entering the labor market after their studies and at the beginning of their career the uk government has stubborn here it says if offers the i'm sure they want to write it offers the individual maximum flexibility to apply for any roles, switch jobs, and develop their career in the UK as they see fit, including if they are looking to build experience or work in order to secure a job offer which would qualify for a route to settlement. The last paragraph of the response says, the roots of the graduate route have been updated to not only reflect the fact someone can switch to a skilled worker route if they meet the requirements but that they can also start employment in full-time permanent vacancy if they make a valid application once they have successfully completed their studies this brings us to the end of the response i got from the uk government in respect to the petition i signed with other 15,000 plus people who signed the petition. So basically what the UK government is trying to say is that the student visa and the graduate visa is not meant for immigration purposes. Your, your primary aim coming to the UK is to study and study is what you should do. And they provided you with a landing visa, which you should be grateful for to look for job and transition into another visa. So from the UK's government response to this petition, it is obvious that the graduate visa will not be extendable and it is obvious that the graduate visa will not count towards permanent residency because they've clearly said that they do not support the petition. I don't know if they would argue it in parliament if the petition should reach a hundred thousand signature because that's what it says on the website. You can go there and check it. The 
petition and the response is on the public domain and it's for public consumption. It's not, there's nothing personal about it. Seeing that we know the UK's government intentions and why they created the student visa and the graduate visa, let's look at how to strategically use the student visa and the graduate visa to settle in the UK permanently. The first strategy is to choose a course of study with good job prospects. Now, when you're coming to study in the UK, please don't choose any how course or don't make any agents push you to choose any how course or any influence push you to choose any how course. Choose a strategic course. Choose a course that by the time you're done with your course of study, you can easily get a job in the UK. Now, I always used to tell people to pick a course of study from this five field, and I'll mention it and tell you why. The first would be healthcare. As long as human beings are living in this UK, they will always need professionals to look after their health. So healthcare in the UK will always be hot cake. The next is tech. The world is becoming a digital world. The world is transitioning into a more digital space. People with tech skills would always be in demand because they would be the ones to help us transition into a more digital world. So if you choose a course of study in tech, you would always be relevant here in the UK. And in this UK, most things are automated. The third would be engineering. As long as you are still living in this UK, people are still living in this UK, we need engineers to help us build things, to help us maintain our electricity, like electrical engineers, to help us maintain the electric system here in the UK. Like trains in the UK are electric. We're talking about electric cars, zero emission. We need people to be in that field. The next field I will always advise people to choose a course of study from is education. We would always need teachers here in the UK to teach our children. Even as professionals, we need teachers to help us when we're writing professional certifications. We need to go to school to upgrade our knowledge. The last field I always advise people to choose a course of study from is finance. Now, as long as there is money, there's an economy, we will need people with financial background, people who understand economics, people who understand how the dynamics between society and money. We need people in that field. One major area the UK gets funds to sustain the society or to sustain its economy is through taxes. So you see, we always need people in finance to help with all of those. The second strategy is to secure <laughs> international professional certifications in your field before coming to study in the UK. Now, we're talking about professional certifications that are international, that are global, that are recognized worldwide. Now, for accountants, I'm not talking about ICANN in Nigeria, I'm talking about ACCA because ACCA is recognized here in the UK and every other part of the world. So in case you even choose to leave the UK to go somewhere else, your certification will still be valid. Having professional certification gives you a competitive advantage when you start to look for a job after your course of study. It will also help your earning potentials. For example, project managers with the PMP certification reported a median salary that is 26% higher than their counterparts without the PMP certification. Apart from this professional certification giving you a competitive advantage when it comes to job search in the UK and also increasing your earning potential, it will also boost your confidence when you are applying for a job here in the UK because you know that once you have the professional certification, most jobs in your field you can apply for confidently and it will help you quickly get interviews. The third strategy is to maximize the dependent visa. Every visa in the UK tends to come with a dependent visa or most primary applicants who are applying for a visa here in the UK can bring a dependent with them when they are coming to the UK. Not all UK visas allows the primary applicant to bring a dependent when they are coming to the UK. For instance, if you're an international student and you're studying at an undergraduate level, you will not be allowed to come with a dependent. You can only come with your dependent to the UK on a student visa if you're studying at a master's level or a PhD level. Another visa that does not allow you to bring a dependent is the graduate visa. Now, you can bring a dependent on the graduate visa if the dependent was on your student visa. 
Now, if you're a primary applicant of the graduate visa and your dependent was not on your student visa when you were on a student visa, you will not be allowed to bring your dependent on a graduate visa. So that are some of the places where you cannot bring a dependent on a visa here to the UK. Having explained that, if you're studying at a PhD level or a master's level, always come with your dependent if you're married or you're in a committed relationship. So this is for people in a relationship or those people who are married. Why I say so is because as an international student in the UK, you're restricted to what you can do and what you cannot do. However, your dependent will not be restricted. So your dependent can easily look for a job. I'll use myself and my partner, for example. When I came to the UK to study and I came with my partner, he was able to secure a job within four months of being in the UK and the job was able to sponsor his visa and then he was primary applicant for the skilled worker visa and I was a dependent and then we transitioned from a student visa to a skilled worker visa. The fourth is to get work experience. Now before coming to study in the UK, get work experience or during your study here in the UK, get work experience in relevant fields. So, if you plan on working in IT, get work experience in IT before coming to study here in the UK because if you get relevant work experience in the field where you want to work and should in case your course of study is in that field, it will help you during your course of study, you'll be able to understand your course better and which will in turn help you pass your course. Apart from helping you pass your course, it will actually give you a fair advantage when you're looking for a job here in the UK. According to UCAS, a recent survey showed that two-thirds of employers look for graduates with relevant work experience because it helps them prepare for work and develop general business awareness. So getting work experience will give you a fair advantage when you're looking for a job here in the UK. One thing I've noticed in the UK labor market is that recruiters like when their candidates have work experience. So having work experience will enable you get into the job market here in the UK as fast as possible. The last but not the least strategic way to use your student visa and your graduate visa to settle in the UK is to start applying for your ideal job immediately your course of study is over. Once your course of study is over, you're not restricted to the kind of work you can do. You're not restricted to working hours. You can work as many hours as you like. Now, what you want to do is that start applying for a job immediately your course of study is over so that before your graduate visa is over, you can secure a skilled worker visa. In the UK, it takes four months to one year for people to get their ID job. Now, once you are done with your course of study and you start actively looking for your ID job, by the time you spend four months to one year, you would get your ID job. Now, if they're applying late, your graduate visa might be running out before you get your ID job and you're not sure if your employer will be willing to sponsor your visa. Remember, in the UK, some employers are always reluctant to sponsor visa because of the changing immigration laws around the work visa. The UK is always changing the immigration laws and some employers do not think they can keep up. So they just prefer to go with someone who already has a work visa or a UK citizen. Now you want to start applying as soon as possible when you're done with your course of study. So that by the time you spend one year on your graduate visa, you can secure a job and then you spend like maybe six months working on that job before your employer will sponsor you. Now some employers might not even want to sponsor you, but when they see that you're working well with them and they like you or they will need your skills, they would actually offer to sponsor your visa. And apart from that, you can use it to get work experience before you go back to your home country. If you're an international student already studying in the UK or you are a prospective international student looking to come study in the UK, I would advise that you use the services of international student affairs for further assistance or information on how to strategically use the student and the graduate visas to settle in the UK legally. I will leave the link to their website in the description box so you can check them out and get more information from that website. I find the website very, very resourceful. With this, we have come to the end of today's video. I wish you guys the very best as you transition from your student visa to a work visa. Do not forget to share this video with someone you think will find it helpful. Bye for now and I will definitely see you in the next video.